You did good. Okay, so we'll check later today and make sure that that is okay. Okay, so today again we're starting with um, within Moodle. We've got our XHTML handout, so we're still on that first project. Um, and most of you probably realize that you got a little email inviting you to UM Box. So, and that's different than your box. Remember, you have access to box, but um, I'm sharing a folder with you. So it's through business technology. It's a, sh and I have to invite the share. Um, so I've done that. And um, I think it'll, yeah, we'll just make sure we label everything so that it works okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that later in the class um, today. And anyway, a little bit that I wanted to, to go back on. So I think homepage is probably good to go so far. Um, remember that when you keyed the home, your index page, I should say, the width and the height was indicated and that's in pixels. So 441 pixels by 371 pixels. And um, on, so that's the lead gold picture. So if I go to that particular image and I'm going to open it with Photoshop and I'll just show you uh, what the size of that is. It's opening. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at this image at 100%, and that's really important to do all the time to look at something at 100% because that again shows you what it's going to be on a screen that's at 100%. Now you can't tell if somebody is always views at 150% or if they always view it 85% you know, because everybody can zoom theirs in. But we know that that's kind of what the intention is at uh, full 100%. So if I go to image, image size on that particular file, um, it looks like it is semi, it shouldn't be that big, but it looks like it's a little bit large, but 441 by 371 at 72 pixels per inch. So really, when we look at our assignment, that's exactly the same size. So this at 100% is intended to be 340 or 441 by 371. Um, web developers still continue to put, and you don't see this all the time, but you see it quite often, um, that they still put in a width or a height, or maybe they put in just the width and then auto height, something like that. And what that does is help to keep your images proportionate so that they display in a more attractive format. So even though, I just wanted to point that out. So even though that is the same um, image size, you still see that quite frequently. So wanted to point that out. Um, and just other, I think we've all been through these other corrections, but you want to be sure that you've proofread and I may, if we have a little extra time, maybe you can, you know, share yours with a student just to make sure you've proofread. The other thing you can do is take it into Microsoft Word because Word's really super good at proofreading. <laughs> so, and you're used to it um, more so than other programs, um, especially grammar check and thesaurus and all those things if you're looking for other words. Um, and just a little bit about detail in general. And this is detail on, you know, you're applying for a job, you're uh, giving a bid proposal to a company you want their business, um, you're posting something online, it's maybe you're posting social media content, um, even Facebook. So I usually, before I push, not that I've ever not made a typo, but you want to be really careful um, and careful in your intent of wording. Because once you push, it's out there and it's tough to pull anything back online. Um, but real example for a bid. So um, if you want to have your house re-roofed, uh, that's a the, the roof is pretty important. Um, getting the roof right is pretty important because if not, it's going to leak and basically 
lots of uh, things within your house then can get damaged. So if you had a bid, and this happened to my mom years and years ago, and we were kind of in, I, I guess I was shown the bids, you know, the, the values and such. So one bid came kind of hand scratched on a piece of paper, um, not a lot of detail, uh, spelling was incorrect, but the bid was lower by actually quite a bit. <laughs> so that was bid A, and then you get to bid B, and it comes in a really nice, you know, formatted document. It's detailed, it's spelled correctly. Um, the bid is more, but comparing the two apples to apples, um, my mom chose the more detailed bid because you look at, okay, are they gonna pick up everything? Am I gonna have chunks of wood with nails in them? And when I run my lawnmower over them, they're gonna become projectiles. I mean, <laughs> you wanna be sure. So that attention to detail um, even though you might be the cheaper bid um, is really important in your customer possibly choosing to go with you or not. And that's all your materials, whether they're online, you know, uploading your resume, all that good stuff. So you want to proofread. Um, let's see. So we've got our images in there. I think everybody changed, uh, either you renamed your image to student underscore pick and used that same file name or you renamed the image. Uh, we'll leave the height in there for now. We're actually gonna be changing that with future assignments, but not this one. Um, size consistency and paragraph text, we'll add a little bit here and we'll be sure that we're consistent. Um, and then our links, we've got very little in, in terms of links, but we'll make sure that they work. And uh, we added our bullets, uh, unordered list. We closed our unordered list. We've got another little horizontal rule. Um, your favorite you know, related websites, hobby related websites, favorite websites, and then we'll go ahead and make sure that we check those today. And then um, you needed to close the body and close the HTML tag. So again, um, here's our opening body tag that we needed to close. Here's the uh, opening HTML element that we need to close. And <clears throat> that's important to do that. And then uh, we've tested a little bit, so we'll continue testing again. And let's go ahead, so I'm gonna open up uh, index some things that we looked at before, um, the I think the the image sizes are getting to be a little bit more consistent, so that might be helpful. And I think you all worked on that yourselves. Um, we'll work on adding some uh, a grid, so something that holds our content a little bit better, maybe even centers it. Does it look like it's really hard left? It's forced hard left, so everything's stacked up. Um, and as we run down, so there's just one link and it's kind of way at the bottom of the page. So it's not in a great location as far as wanting my viewer to be able to see it. Uh, that might be a problem as well. And we don't have an, an email link, so that's a problem. What do you think about the size of the course, you know, spring, the email, is that large enough, do you think? Or should it be a little bit bigger? I think that the way that it's kind of separated from the email. It's okay. Um, and we could make it a little bit bigger if you control minus. So if you, again, we don't know if somebody's viewing this at a smaller size, then it is kind of tough to read. Um, and again, that's not, you know, now I'm at, uh, I think I'm, yeah, I'm 100% here. So that's okay at 100%. We may want to edit that and just see what it looks like. So to edit again a file, lots of ways to open it, but on index, I'm going to open with and notepad. So uh, we know that headings one through six, those are the normal heading levels and heading one is the biggest heading six is the littlest. So maybe we want to try heading four. And again, if I change one of them, I've got to change both of them. Remember, we've got an opening and a closing tag. So I'm gonna change my heading four before enrolled in, um, modify to change um, the closing tag to heading four after your email. And then you can go ahead and just file save that. And then we can refresh, remember just the little circling arrow. So I think that's better. 
And even if we control minus, I can still read that at 80%. So that's okay. That's better, I think. Okay. And again, that was just modifying opening tag. So we're just going one level at a time, testing it, see what we think. So heading four, closing heading four. Okay, back to our instructions here. Um, so we did that. And uh, we know that there's too much screen space to the right. Um, our eye has to travel long distances in some cases for that paragraph format. Um, we maybe are missing some identifying information. So one thing that we'll do to fix this, so there's styles. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about cascading style sheets, CSS, you probably heard, maybe had some experience with. So with styles, there's internal styles and external styles. And we're actually going to use internal styles for this example so that we can see internally, we can see what happens, you know, we add this and then save it, refresh it. And um, it's pretty, I mean, you see it right there, what's, what's happening and why. Um, so that's why I do that. It's not very common really to have uh, internal styles that do a whole lot. There might still be some, but oftentimes, most often and most efficient is to use one uh, usually one external style sheet. And um, you as the viewer, remember I said you can right mouse click on any website and view the web, the source, but you can't view their, their cascading style sheet because it's external. You can view any internal styles they might have, but not the external cascading style sheet. Um, but it's most efficient to separate the, so the format from the content. So that's kind of what we're doing, but we are going to add the internal style here. So in our um, document, and we'll add this to our index page here. So I'll try to get both of them on screen so that you can see them. So locate your title tag at the top. And we're going to go ahead and add a blank line after our title tag. So we want to be sure that we're inside, it doesn't really matter where it's at necessarily in the head content, but just for organization, um, we need to be before the end of the head content and we'll go ahead and enter key after title. Okay, and then we're gonna add a style. So the tag is a uh, left bracket and then style with the right bracket. And I'm um, copying this information right here. And then I'll go ahead and enter key. And I will do a little bit of, of tabbing to organize our styles a little bit. It seems to help uh, visually. And we're going to create first what's called a class. So we can redefine a tag or we can create a class that applies to whatever I highlight. So, or what's ever between the, the class elements, the opening and closing class elements. Redefining a tag can sometimes be dangerous. If I redefined my P tag, every single paragraph, especially if it was an external style, whatever I did to redefine P tag would apply to everything. And that might be your intent. Could be that it's just Arial 10 point and that's all I want. So that would be fine too. <coughs> okay, so we'll start with the period that identifies the class. So period and then, um, and how you type this again, I'll, I'll type it exactly it is on, as on my instructions, but it's your file. So when you go to create this later or do something similar, how you do it can be different. So this is called grid container. And then there is actually a space there. It looks like one and there is one. And then shift with the left curly bracket. And that's located right up by the backspace key. So that top right area. And then go ahead and enter key and we're going to change our width and I am going to tab that in and the um, attribute or, or uh, instructions, I want the width to be 75%. So width and then a colon and that's again shift with the colon 75 and then percent key. Um, I'm ending my instruction there with a semicolon and then enter key, and then I've got to end my little bracket area. So that's a right, so that's shift again, right bracket, and then enter key, and I need to end my style. So again, my uh, bracket slash, and then I'm ending my style. So I'll highlight what I did just so that you can kind of see that. 
So we added, again, we've got opening and closing style tag. Um, inside my style, currently I've got one class. I've, and again, the period identifies it as a class. Class meaning I can select or have a range that I want to apply this class to. And I have told it I want the width to be 75%. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And we have the same file name, so save is good there. Um, and then within our document, so we can figure out, again, if I go to my document, um, we can figure out where we want that 75% to take effect. So I may want it to be, I, I could put it after my horizontal rule so that my picture is within the 75%. Um, and you know, my class and all that would be um, in a long screen format. It's all shoved to the left, so it doesn't really matter. But where I put this is kind of my decision. And maybe we'll do that before um, the image. So let's go ahead and move to, and again, here's that horizontal rule here. And then the paragraph starts my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there. And again, back to our instructions. So I'm right after the horizontal rule that's uh, after my email. Okay, so let's go ahead and add, it's, it's a div. So it's a division of space, really. So division, div, and then my class equals, and my class equals without the period. So the class is, we have identified the grid container as a class, but we don't have to, with the period, but we don't have to put the period in there. But we do have to tell it class equals. And then again with my quotes, and I want to spell it exactly as you would, you know, we spelled it on the assignment or however you did it. And then I'm going to close my first, so that's my opening division. And then I want to find out where it is that I want to close it. So let me go back and see here. Oh, there we go. And then back here. So um, I don't have a footer or anything else here. And I probably want everything to be in this. If I had a footer, maybe I'd want to stop my division above that footer so that the footer spread, you know, end to end. But I probably want everything in here. So let's go ahead and end our division. And it's going to be after hobbies. So we can go ahead and click after the P tag following our hobbies link. Enter key. And a closing div is the same as closing everything else. So within my brackets. And then I've got the forward slash and my div. And then my ending bracket. So I'll scroll this out a little bit further. So we've got our beginning. What we should see is everything that I've got there, my beginning div container through the ending div container, which is quite a bit of the meat of the document there, should be in a section that's labeled at 75% view. Okay, so let's save what we did. And then let's come over to our, um, and again, if you need to open it again, um, and I'll go ahead and maximize this so that you can see the whole thing. If you need to open it, Remember, you can just double click on it. But if I go ahead and refresh it, so I may not notice a lot. And if I look at it at maximum view, so remember we told it 75%. So it's it's doing it, but, but it's still not very attractive yet. <laughs> so um, we can tell that that horizontal rule defaults edge to edge. This one stops at 75%. But it's still really hard left, isn't it? There's nothing centered. Um, it's a little better and it's going to be 75% whatever screen, screen size. So it keeps kind of moving down, even if I get it to my phone size, uh, goes to 75%. Okay, so back to the instructions again. Okay, um, oh, I'll move this smaller. All right, so the other problem we noticed then is that it doesn't look very attractive, it's still hard left. So there's a couple of um, margin additions we can add. So a margin left auto and a margin right uh, auto, and that's going to move everything within the center of the window. 
So we'll click after our 75% instruction there and go ahead and enter key. I'll tab in just for um, organization. So margin hyphen left. And I have to have my colon after that with a space and then just auto. And then I end with my uh, semicolon. And then same thing, but margin right. Okay, so let's file save that and come back to our document. I'll make it a little bit bigger there. Refresh and we're starting to get somewhere. So you should have centered content anyway. And then we can adjust if, if we don't really like that 75%, we can adjust that. Remember, we don't have, so the other thing we're going to find really valuable with cascading style sheets is at really big screen sizes, I want particular instructions. So I might want it at either less or maybe I want a different format. Maybe I want it to be in column text. And then at my tablet size, I might kind of like something similar to this. And my phone size, I really don't need 75%. Maybe I want it to be 100% or 95%. So we can adjust that with each one of our instructions there. Okay, so let's also add, and again, this is in the instruction area. Um, let's add a, a little border. So we've got, uh, again, it'll kind of set it further away. So uh, after our, and again, it can be anywhere within the grid container. It doesn't matter if it's first or second or third, but. Okay, so we'll add one more. Um, attribute there. So the border and my colon space and it's a thin line that's solid in nature and the color which is the uh, pound sign or hashtag is black which is three zeros. I could tell it I want the border to be thick, dashed, and blue because I can type in blue and it recognizes it. If you want to try that, you certainly can. Um, so let's go see what that did. So file, save, and back again, and refresh. So no matter what the size, again, our border, and again, it's only on the grid container, so it's not the whole thing, is uh, black. Okay, what do you think of that as in terms of design? better. Okay. What are, do you see other problems that I just created for myself? Orders are really close. That's, that creates tension and it makes it hard to read in some cases and it's really not very professional to look at. Okay. So I kind of like it, but I created another problem. So now we'll go back to um, our little handout here and I've got the padding. And again, we can try different values, but let's go ahead and after our border, enter key, tab key in again, and I've got padding at left. And I'll just try 1% for both of them. Padding right, 1%. And let's save that, come back over, refresh again. And we'll try it at all of our different viewing sizes. I think at desktop, that helps a lot. It kind of moves everything away from that edge and it, it just looks better. That's called eye rest. Really a um, technical term, isn't it? Anyway, and even at 1% on, so 1% in a large screen, desktop size, I don't think that that's too much. I think that's comfortable. In the small screen, it still seems like that's pretty comfortable. I don't know that I need the 75% at a small screen, but so far we'll deal with that. Um, but I think that that looks better. Then to even further set this apart, so maybe we want a little bit of color. Um, so we'll go back to our instructions. And again, you can choose um, other you know, colors that you want. But in this one, we're actually going to, again, I'm within my style here. We're actually gonna redefine 
um, a tag. And um, we, let's see, I'll use the, actually we'll put this in our body, I think. You know, yeah, we'll put it inside here, okay. Because you, you actually could do body um, equals or background hyphen color. So it's better to put it in a style, but we actually could do it within the text, but it's better to group things um, together. So we'll go after our padding again. And uh, oops, I've got to put my little semicolon there. Okay, and then um, you can leave space if you want to, you don't need to. Um, Oh, this one, yeah, this one does have us redefining. It does have us out. Okay, we'll do a different different format here. So let's go outside of the curly bracket. So we'll keep these separate. So the grid container is separate. And I'm still within my headings part within the style closing, before the style closing tag. Um, so I'm gonna redefine body. Body is everything that you see, so it's kind of like your white space. So body, and we'll go ahead and go curly bracket left, uh, enter key, tab key in, and background color. So that's the um, <coughs> attribute name to color everything light blue. So background hyphen color, oops, color, and my colon space, and I'm using a term it recognizes. So um, like, I don't know if it would recognize chartreuse, but probably, but you'd have to spell chartreuse, yeah, chartreuse right also. So there are some colors that it does recognize, straight colors. Um, and then most of you are probably familiar with um, hex codes, like he hexadecimal color codes. So you can always come in and find a color, you know, whether it's Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator that you're using with other um, pictures or elements that you're using, and eyedropper the color that you want, copy that color and paste it in here. And we'll do some of that as well. Um, but you can find, or if it's a corporate color. So you have to use exactly, you know, University Maroon, for example, that, that's a color. Um, what else was I going to say about color? Oh, we'll just keep going. Okay, then we're going to close. So um, right bracket. Okay, so let's do file save there. Back here and refresh. So everything becomes light blue and we can offset the grid container box. We'll do that here in just a minute, but we've got a little bit of color anyway. Um, what you don't want to do is use something that's a dark blue against black background. You can't probably even read that, right? So that violates a design principle of contrast. So in all cases, and that's just good accessibility also, you need high contrast. So the light blue, I think, is um, enough. I'll resave that again. Do you ever see that, though, sometimes? Yeah. Not as much as you used to. I mean, I think we used to, because it was like, cool, I can make a color, really? <laughs> and I think that would be fine, but then you'd have to change your color, text color to white, or really light yellow or something, you know? Then I think it'd be okay. But did I save this? I'm talking and then I forget. Okay, so I think the light blue is soft enough. It makes it legible. All right, so back to our instructions again. And uh, we will change the email link here in a minute. Um, we'll add, so just to see what it looks like, we'll add a color just in the grid container to see if you like it. Um, some of you may like everything to be a solid color. Some of you may like to have the contrasting colors a little bit. So um, the instruction there, and this one is going to be in grid container because we only want it to apply to that, you know, small little box area that we have. So we'll tell it background color and uh, white happens to be FFF. And oh, the other thing I should tell you, that's what I remembered. 
So hexadecimal colors are usually six characters. So we can use three characters if you have um, black is all zeros, white is all Fs, which is really strange. I don't know why that is, but it is. <laughs> um, if I had a, a character, um, so two Cs, um, I don't know what color this is going to be, but actually let me try C, 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 F, F. So if I had a color, I think this is lavender, but um, I might be wrong. Oh, I did the background. I didn't mean that's the border. I did the wrong place. Control T. So I want, and here. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so that is, um, if I had a color that I knew, uh, light lavender was CC, CC, FF, you can see that there's blocks of two Cs, two Cs, and two Fs. So I actually can just do CCF, file, save, and it's going to be exactly the same thing. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but you can shorten them. That's why sometimes you see colors that are three characters and colors that are six characters. Okay, so I'm gonna make that light blue again so that I'm on track with everybody else. And here, okay. So let's go ahead and add, and that's one of our, um, in the instructions again. So I'm gonna be after my padding, right padding, enter key again, I'll tab key for organization. So background color, same thing. And this one's going to be pound sign, and I can use uppercase or lowercase Fs. And then with my um, semicolon to close that. Okay, so we can go ahead and file save that back here. So now we have kind of a two tone look. So it's easy to read. We've got a little bit of color. Again, we could have contrasting corporate colors, for example, that we're using. Um, within our document. Okay, the other problem that we have is the email link. And that we need to edit to make it so that it's a workable email link. Um, so we want to go to make sure you find your email. We'll add, we can keep what's there for the most part, but we'll need to add some information. So make sure that you're in front of the first character of your email. Okay. And then it's going to be an anchor hyperlink reference to email, which is mail to if that makes any sense. So we'll begin with our left bracket, and then it's an anchor space, and then hyperlink reference is href, and equal to, and then we have to start our quote, and the instruction is M-A-I-L-T-O, all squished together, there's no spaces. So M-A-I-L-T-O colon, and then I've got you know my e email address, da 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 so I go after my edu and then my uh, quote mark. So remember the whole email address, quote mark, mail to colon, your full email address and your quote. Okay, so after that ending quote, I wanna close my beginning anchor tag. So I've got my beginning anchor there. And then I wanna write my content that is what the viewer is going to see. Some web developers like to actually have the full email address and content. So you may find that, but we'll go ahead and just type text. So email uh, you, not me, comma, space, and maybe you're the webmaster. So email your name, comma, space, webmaster, or email webmaster, or I don't know, whatever you want to put in there. Okay, and then we need to end the anchor. So I remember I started my anchor. So bracket, slash is to end, ending my anchor, and then end my um, anchor with the right facing bracket. 
we already closed our heading four, so we don't need to close that. Okay, so the whole thing, I'll highlight there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then file, save that. And remember that when we refresh, so this is not, I've not set this computer up to go with my Outlook, for example. So if you click on that, and you can hold your mouse there, and at the bottom of your screen, you see the email address, so you'll know if it's correct. Um, but when I click on it, it's going to say, do you want to set this all up? So we won't. In my office, though, where it's all set up, um, when I click on yours, I would open my email and it would fill in your name and then I'd have to type a subject and I can send an email to you. Okay, mm -hmm. questions on that? I have a, a style question. So mm -hmm. the link is by default um, that blue color, which maybe doesn't look so great against some backgrounds. Is right. That that yes, and that's high contrast as well. So that would be a part of the cascading style sheets. And I mean, I can still read that there, but if I change that to, let's say I made all my link colors light gray, it would be pretty tough to see here. And the other thing, the default link colors, so it's blue before I do anything, click it. Then it turns, um, has this one turned that purple color yet? Yeah, so then that one becomes the purple color. So you have to keep in mind that in different parts of, if I've got a link that's in white and I've got a link that's in light blue, what colors are going to possibly work in all those settings? So you do have to use high contrast um, and it, it can be a challenge. Yeah, that's true and we will bring that up later. That's a good point. Yeah, we'll deal with that later in the class too. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, any problems with that or do you have issues with anything so far that were, you have some issues? <laughs> okay. And um, I can help a, a couple of minutes maybe after class. I don't think people come in on Fridays now. Wasn't it just that one day that the class came in here that was last Friday? Yeah, I don't know that we have, so we might be good to go. Anyway. So back to the instructions. I think we've already done this. Opening Photoshop, we used image image size to bring your image uh, down to a smaller proportion. Um, with my Vigela Cousins, I went to about 500. With Bo, I think I went to about 500. The lead building is, I, can't, I think it's 471, something like mm -hmm. that. So we're kind of all in that same area. And remember with Photoshop, it's, um, image, image size to go in, and then you can change by uh, inches if you feel better about looking at that at this point, or by pixel dimension. And then remember to, to optimize it, it's file export, not file save as. Um, and that's the other thing that I wanted to show you too. So remember Bo, that was one image. So there's a couple that we all used. Um, the Missoula College Lead Gold, we didn't optimize that. We didn't, it can't, we downloaded it at 441 by 371 or whatever our image size is. We did not go into file, export, save for web, remember? So that one is a fairly large file. But Bo, we did do that. And if I go to my downloads, um, yeah. So here's the original, and you may have that still in your downloads too. I don't think they probably clear out. Um, but Bo was 264K before we took him in, sized him down, and then optimized him for the web. So if you've got a pretty image heavy website, it's a really good idea to do that. Um, I think on, I know the university side, I can't remember which, was it admissions? It was kind of a crazy one. It was admissions. There was a really big video there for a while. Does anybody remember that? So I emailed Kathy Cole and told her that it was like taking five minutes to load. <laughs> so the, the image was quite large. So yep, and that's the 
I think that's a lot of the style right now is to have these massive images, but you don't need to have, you can still have the massive images, but save them for web um, so that they don't slow up loading because sometimes you don't get, people give about usually 30 seconds where they're gonna sit there and unless they have to, have to, have to. But if you're just comparing and looking and scanning around, you don't give websites very long. Am I, is that about right? Would you say about 30 seconds? Yeah. Or less. or less, yeah. Um, let's see. And again, when proofing your web pages, restore display. So we want to make sure that we look at, say, the phone size, a tablet size, and a desktop size. Um, the River Campus. Um, I don't know if that was if that did that. Oh, I think. Yeah, Bo still does. Okay. And I don't know if yours does or not. And this one does too a little bit. So if this were a phone size, um, they're a little bit large and they don't auto size down. So I don't know if yours are like that or not in a similar way as mine, but that's kind of a problem too. So um, to correct that, we can add a style that sets our maximum width to be 100% of the window, and then it'll automatically size the height. So we'll go to our student picture just as a um, demonstration to try it on one of them. So we all have whatever your student picture is, okay? So that part is okay. We've got the P tag, that's good. We've got the image source that equals your picture. And then we're going to add a style. And again, it can be before or after the alt text does, does not matter, but you do have to have spaces. So if I've got several instructions within an element, I need to make sure I separate them by a space. Otherwise, it doesn't know that there is an instruction there. Okay. So before I'm just clicked right before the alt, I'm going to add a style. So this is a inline style, actually. So style. And then equals, I'm going to start my quote, max, and then hyphen width. Whoops, if I can just type correctly. Max hyphen width, and then my colon, space, uh, actually no space, 100%. I'm so used to space. Um, where is my cursor? It's wrapping around. Sorry about that. I'll squish it out here in just a minute. And then my semicolon, height, H-E-I-G-H-T, and colon, auto. So that should automatically size against whatever maximum is. My semicolon to end my last instruction. And my quote to close. And then my space to separate my elements tag elements. I'm going to squish that out so that you can see the whole thing here. Um, that's the whole instruction, but what we added was make sure there's a space separating your file name and the beginning of your style tag. And then within my quotes, the maximum width, so max hyphen width, colon, 100%, semicolon, Adjust the height to auto, H-E-I-G-H-T, okay? Make sure you've got your space. Okay, so save that. Then, back here and refresh. So the only way we can test it is to go back down to that mobile, like phone size, and they should squish down. Why doesn't that one squish down? Yeah, we didn't do, we have to add it to every single one. Now, if I added a, in my style, so my main style at the top, then it would adjust. But the, so let's find, let's actually do that. Um, sometimes styles override other styles. So we'll remember how we have that height equals width equals. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add back out again and we can add that um, we'll go ahead and just add it right to this one here 
And I'll squish that out. Got our image, actually get rid of that. And before that, Oops, that's too early auto. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Is it typing away here? Okay, so that's I think correct. So file save and back here, test and the other style overrides it. So let's get rid of, and wanna have just one space. So depending upon where you delete, uh, leave one space before that. So it's self-closing. Save, come back here, refresh. Yeah. And I would guess that the inline, if this were, if we had all of our image, so we had an, uh, we re rewrote the image tag to be max 100%, max width 100%, height auto. Um, I would guess that that inline would still override the, you know, the style that we had, say the grid container, or we overwrote the tag at the top, so. Anyway, I think that might be pretty close to, oh, and then we'll add a back. Um, so we want to get back to our, be convenient anyway, to get back to our home page. So we can actually just copy exactly the same thing. So let's go to, um, oh, this would be on the other one, but we can copy this still. So uh, highlight the My Hobbies paragraph tag, the paragraph tag, mm -hmm. control C to copy that. And let's open up, I've got to go back to my folder there. Um, open up your hobbies in notepad view. So go ahead and right mouse click on that and open with notepad. So at the end, um, we'll just do a control V but I've got to change this to go back to index. So instead of going to hobbies, I'm going to go to index and I can tell it what I want. I can go back to home or home. I can name it back to XYZ Corporation homepage if I really want to have more search engine optimization in there. So whatever you want to do there. Um, file save. The other thing that we could do too, since we've got this open, um, we already know that this style tag works okay. So if you want to copy that, you've got other images. If you'd like them to be sized as well, you can copy that tag, control C, go to my hobbies page, and then everywhere I've got an image, I can do exactly the same thing. Control V, but make sure you have a space before your style tag and after your style tag. And I've got one more image here at the bottom. Um, so save that. Be sure to save your index page in case you made changes there. Um, so the only thing that we'll need to do on Monday when we come back is validate. So if you're a little bit behind, I guess on your instruction, um, be sure that you get to, you know, basically this whole thing until you get to um, going back to, so from your index page, you want to go back home. And then we'll validate, um, we'll add, I think we're going to run into where we've got at least one error. Um, I'm going to make you add another tag so that we have another error. Um, because some of you key perfectly. So I want to make sure you see what happens when you have an error. <laughs> so um, we'll do that on Monday. And then the assignment. So once we're done with this assignment, we'll do a little bit of proofreading. 
Um, but once we're done, we'll upload it to that shared box folder. So that's where I'm going to grade it from. Okay. Um, the box folder. So if I go to our web page, just to show you where it's at. Um, if I go to my UMT, you should see UM box. Okay. If you haven't been here before and you have to continue as part of UM. Um, you have to add your single sign on there. And then you won't see the, the whole progression here, but within Missoula Business Technology, Missoula College, there's a shared area. Within my spring to 20, 2020, there's uh, projects. And I think you all have a share to that folder. Okay, so hopefully all of your stuff. And to upload, um, we're gonna upload not files, but your entire XHTML um, folder. Okay, and then all everything within that will be uploaded. And we'll do that as a class, so don't worry about having to do that, but that's what we'll be doing. Okay, so go ahead and log out. Um, and I do have some a little bit of time. I've got a student coming at 10, but is there anybody that has issues? Katie, you had yes. a little bit? Okay. Oh, let me stop my recording really quick.